Hey guys, and welcome back to Becca Does Stuff. Today, let's go over 15 low waste products that I currently do not own. There's a lot of really great low waste products out there on the market, and some of these might be absolutely amazing for some people, but they either just don't make sense for me, or I just don't really have a need for them yet, or maybe I have the unsustainable alternative to it. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into those products. Number one on my list is bamboo cutlery. I just use the silverware I already have to take to work with me or wherever. Uh, the only thing I could see bamboo cutlery maybe being a somewhat necessity is if you are traveling by plane and of course it's harder to take objects like knives or maybe even metal forks on an airplane. So if you're planning on eating on the plane and you don't want to use their disposable cutlery, you might want to bring bamboo cutlery with you. I have also heard from people that some of them fall apart and they tend to splinter and break and they're harder to maintain and that some of them don't really work quite as well. I actually have some plastic utensils that my boyfriend had gotten from takeout inadvertently. So I just reuse that. I take that to work with me sometimes or I use my own cutlery or if I'm flying and I feel like I need to take my own cutlery with me, I could just take the plastic ones that I have. Number two on my list is bamboo straws. I do own straws, reusable straws. I have metal ones and I did not go out and purchase them because it was the trendy thing to do within the sustainability movement. I used plastic disposable straws before I went low waste <gasps> because we have dogs. Their dog hair always ends up in our drinks. So we always have drinks with covered lids, a lot of which have the hole for the straw. That's how we choose to drink a lot of our, our beverages. There's silicone straws, there's glass straws, metal, and then there's bamboo. And the reason why I never um, was interested in the bamboo ones is because when I have a glass of water with a straw in it, it stays in it all day long. I'm walking around pretty much all day with that straw sitting in there and I have heard that the bamboo ones can't stay sitting in liquid for a long period of time because as with any type of wood or grass, I know that bamboo's grass, it'll start to like expand and um, it could possibly mold or mildew, it could splinter. I wouldn't say go out and get reusable straws if you don't really use straws anyway. If you do use straws a lot in your life, I would recommend silicone, glass, or metal, but bamboo just, <laughs> not really for me. Number three on my list is cloth handkerchiefs. Now, I'm not judging anybody who has these. My grandfather actually used to walk around all the time with a hanky in his pocket. And that's great if that works for you, but I just don't feel like I wanna carry that around in my pocket with me, as terrible as that may sound. I have thought about Last Tissue, I think it's called. There's a brand called Last and then there's a brand called Final and I get them confused sometimes. I believe it's Last Object that makes the Last Tissue. They have a dispenser. You fold up your clean tissues and put them in one end and when you use it, you put it in another end where the dirty ones go and then you can just take them out and throw them in the laundry. And they look like they might be thin enough to function more similarly to a regular tissue rather than like a bulky piece of cloth. Those are ones that I have kept in mind. Right now, I currently use disposable facial tissues by Who Gives a Crap and they are bamboo ones, but I will tell you they are not very soft. They're actually kind of stiff and scratchy and they don't bother my nose, but if you are having allergies or a cold where you're having to blow your nose a lot, I could see where your nose might get all red or chapped from using these. Um, they're not like your Puffs Plus with lotion or anything like that by any means. But one good thing about them is they're not linty. So some of the regular like Puffs and Kleenex and those brands, they make these really soft, plush feeling tissues, but dust comes off of them, like little fragments of the tissue, the fluffiness comes off, and that will actually go in your nostrils and make you sneeze more. So the who gives a crap bamboo ones do not do that. Number four on my list is disposable compostable dishes. 
Some people like to go out and buy disposable dishes when they're having a large party or event of some sort so that they don't have to do a bunch of dishes. Me personally, I don't have a problem doing dishes. I also have a dishwasher, so that helps, but I just don't really personally find the need to go get compostable dishes. And there's also compostable cutlery, which, oh, uh, compostable cutlery and like bioplastics and things like that is a whole other subject that I'm not gonna get into. I kind of have mixed feelings about it because you need the proper infrastructure to properly break those down. So although uh, a lot of these like plastic looking cutlery that are made of plant-based plastics say compostable on them, they're probably not gonna decompose in your backyard just saying. And if you have commercial compost pickup like I do, please make sure that you check with them first before tossing that in there. Just because it says compostable does not mean that it can be handled at their facility. It doesn't mean that they can properly break it down. So it'll end up being a contaminant rather than you know, a true compostable. And also just a little side note, when you're looking for compostable products, make sure that it says compostable and not biodegradable. Biodegradable, I've probably said this before, it is not a police term. A lot of things are technically biodegradable because at some point they will break down, but um, that could be hundreds of years from now. So everything that is compostable is biodegradable, but not vice versa. If it says biodegradable, it does not mean that it's going to compost. So um, some of you may already know that, but if not, you know, I just thought I'd throw that out there. So anyway, I'm not saying that the plastic cutlery alternatives are better than the compostable version. I just don't buy either. Number five on my list is a TerraCycle box. TerraCycle, Shell Bizzle's done a few videos on TerraCycle, which has been helpful because the whole thing with them has kind of confused me a little. God, I'm so confused. It seems like a really great idea. They um, take all kinds of stuff that is not normally recyclable that you can't just throw in your recycling bin on the curbside, like, you know, like Doritos bags and disposable razor heads and just a lot of different things. They take and they recycle them. And I think that's awesome. It's so awesome, but it's very expensive to get one of the boxes for yourself. And I believe that the financial burden of those should be on the manufacturer and not on the consumer. I can't find any that are accessible around me. I've searched and the only ones I found were for markers at schools and they only take them at the school. Like if you go to school there, they won't just let people off the street come to the school with a bunch of markers and drop them in the box. TerraCycle is not very realistic for me financially and it's not very accessible to me. Uh, number six on my list is a bamboo toothbrush. Well, I do have one bamboo toothbrush that I did test out just for the sake of testing sustainable products. And it didn't have like one of those pointy heads. So I ended up getting a really bad toothache because it turns out I had food stuck back here somewhere that the toothbrush could not reach. And I ended up going to the dentist for it and everything. They were like, yeah, you just got food stuck in your mouth. You're fine. <laughs> but anyway, um, it, it hurt pretty bad. So um, bamboo toothbrushes, I mean, not all of them are made equally. Some of them might have the pointy thing and that might not be a problem, but I don't buy them because I have an electric toothbrush. You guys know I've talked about my electric toothbrush fiasco. Finally went out and bought myself a new one and my dental hygienist highly recommends uh, an electric toothbrush. So I'm listening to her because I care about my oral health. Another thing that I do not own is a bamboo toilet brush. I have a plastic toilet brush that I've had for a while and it's still keeping on keeping on. And you gotta keep on keeping on. It's still doing its job, so there's no point in me throwing it out just to get a bamboo one to look more sustainable. I'm not really concerned about appearances like that. So I'm just gonna keep using my plastic one. I have heard that the bamboo ones can tend to mold or mildew. I don't wanna say that about all of them in general though, because I really think it depends on how it's made. And like I said, I don't have one, so I can't speak to it personally, but I do have a wooden dish brush, as you guys know, and it hasn't molded or mildewed, so. 
Uh, I think it just depends on how it's made. Number eight on my list is reusable cotton swabs. So instead of getting like the Q-tip brand cotton swabs, um, some people would get the silicone. Wrong. I believe, is it last or final that makes the, the reusable swabs? I think it's the last swab, yeah. Um, but anyway, if you're using it to clean things like your keyboard or to apply or remove makeup, the silicone ones Run! might be great for you, but I use my disposable cotton swabs for cleaning my ears. And I know you're not supposed to stick things in your ears, but sometimes I just gotta. I've heard that the silicone swabs Run! Um, don't really absorb water. So like I like to clean this part of my ear after a shower because water kind of gets trapped in here. So um, I don't know if the silicone one- Wrong, wrong, wrong. One would really, you know, get in there and do the job. Number nine on my list is compostable trash bags. Um, I'm talking about actual garbage bags, like the tall ones you put in your kitchen. I'm not talking about the little ones that go in compost bins. I mean, I don't have the little compostable ones that go in the compost bins either, but those ones seem to make a little bit more sense. I have post-consumer plastic uh, trash bags. So they're, they're recycled plastic trash bags. And I would be willing to try compostable trash bags, but I would have to do research on a few things about them first, like any certifications that they have and will they actually compost in the landfill or are they just going to end up being just like any other organic matter that ends up in the landfill, just end up as trash and producing methane gas. Compostable bags will break down into non-toxic matter, but some of them will only decompose in very specific conditions like high heat composting facilities. So that's something to think about. Number 10 on my list is toothpaste tabs. These are pretty trendy in the sustainability movement. I can see the appeal in a way because they usually just come in a little glass or metal jar and you just take them, chew them, brush your teeth and that's it. And then the container can easily be recycled or reused. Uh, that sounds great, but I've heard that they're very chalky and I mm, just the thought of like having some kind of chalky stuff in my mouth, I'm like, mm, nope, <laughs> I can't do it. And then having to chew on something and use my saliva to help get it like frothy or whatever. <laughs> I don't know why, but it like kind of grosses me out a little. I do use Hey Human toothpaste and it comes in an aluminum tube that can be cleaned out and recycled. So that's working for me for right now. Number 11 on my list kind of in the same realm of um, oral care is charcoal oral care stuff. I don't know why, but charcoal has been very trendy lately and um, like over the past few years. And when it comes to oral care, on behalf of my dentist friend, she says, knock it off. Charcoal is actually terrible for your teeth. Like people tout it as this great tooth whitener and maybe it does do that, but I've been told that it actually rubs away the enamel of your teeth, which then leaves your teeth susceptible to more damage and cavities and things like that. So before you buy any toothpaste or floss with charcoal in it, please speak to your dentist about it. I mean, you don't have to take my word for it, but just speak to your dentist and make sure that that's actually the best thing. I had a bamboo floss that I found out after owning it for a while that it had charcoal in it. I don't know why I never noticed that before, but once I found out that it had charcoal in it, I discontinued using that and I found a different one instead. Number 12 on my list is a clean canteen, hydro flask, or any other trendy water bottle, especially because the price tag on them is kind of high. I have some old banged up <laughs> reusable water bottles in my cabinet and they're still doing their job. I use them pretty much daily. I don't need to just go out and buy ones because they're the popular ones. Water bottles that I currently have um, keep my water nice and cool for a long time. And that's even being out here in Phoenix, Arizona. I've left them in my car in the heat and come back and the bottle itself was hot, but the contents on the inside were nice and cool. So you know what? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Number 13 on my list is metal tiffins. I'm talking about those 
those little um, food storage containers. They're like stackable metal ones and they have the thing that clasps them all together. I think they look pretty cool. And the idea of having like a tier for your salad and one for your soup and one to put your dressing in or whatever you do with them, I always thought it seemed really neat to just have them all in one thing and you know take them to work like that. But I have my IKEA glass containers. They have plastic snapshot lids. They work great for me. So I'm gonna keep using those. You guys know I also use jars. I also have plastic Tupperware that you guys know I'm not a huge fan of, but um, I already own it. So I'm gonna keep using that. I also save plastic containers from I don't know, sour cream or whatever comes in a little plastic container with a lid, I save that and reuse it. When all my plastic junk is gone, which will be a glorious day, <laughs> I could entertain the idea of getting a metal tiffin because they seem really cool, but a couple things to think about before you go out and buy one. I have heard that they do not maintain the temperature of your food very well. So if you need it to be a little more insulated, that might not be the best product for that. If you microwave your food, if you're taking food to, you know, work for lunch or something and you need to pop it in the microwave, you obviously should not be doing that with the metal container. That's very dangerous. Number 14 on my list is bowl huggers. Um, they're those usually cloth and they have some kind of elastic around them. They look like shower caps to me, but it's not a shower cap. So when you have food in a bowl that you're going to put in the fridge and, you know, save for later, you just put that over it so that nothing falls in there and kind of keep it all together but I don't feel the need for that because if I ever put something in the refrigerator that's in a bowl, I mean, I have lots of containers to put food in, but let's say I'm using one of my big bowls that doesn't have a lid. I just put a plate over top and put that in the fridge like that. And then I can stack things on top of that plate as well, which you can't do with the bowl huggers. And I feel like the bowl huggers would kind of um, just be extra junk in my drawers. And I don't really have a lot of room in my kitchen drawers. So it, yeah. And then finally, number 15 on my list, which I think has been very trendy over the past several years, is keep cups. Those are those travel glass coffee mug things with the cork band around it. I have some travel coffee mugs that I've had for years. I think even if I didn't have any now, I would still go out and just buy a normal travel coffee mug because traveling around with a glass mug for me is a bad idea because I drop things. So that is guaranteed to shatter at some point. Also, it seems like they're kind of small and I don't know how well they maintain the temperature. I don't know, I haven't used one, not trash talking them, but I know that my, my metal travel mug maintains the temperature very well. So if I'm sipping on tea like all day long, it, it stays warm most of the day and I don't burn my hands on it and it's a decent size. And that's all I have for you today, guys. Those are the 15 trendy sustainable products that I do not own. I hope you enjoyed this video and until next time, you guys take really good care of yourselves. Loud trucks, all the time, loud trucks. Go away, loud truck, go away. Waiting for a loud truck to go away. Wow. Dog tail wagging behind me. <laughs> I do not have a tail, that was my dog. Is that a normal way to end a video?